Today, Adobe dropped an update to Lightroom version 12.4, and there's a couple useful features in there that I just wanna go over real quick, so let's jump to it. So I'm gonna start with the feature that will be useful for me, and it's in the HSL panel. Now, I use this panel all the time when I'm editing photos to individually target uh, certain colors. I don't like using like the saturation or the vibrance because it impacts everything. So I like just using the HSL to be able to dial in specifically to the color. So with this update, you now can hold Option or the Alt key on Windows over the hue and it will highlight where in your image that color exists. Now this is useful because Prior to this, basically what I would do is just adjust the luminance slider to get an idea as to where in the image that color fell. So now to be able to just hit the option key and I can just go through and see exactly where that tonal range is at in the image, that is just useful. Now, you know, it's something that of course I was able to still do the same thing here, but now instead of having to do that, I can just quickly see where those colors fall and then I can make those adjustments as I need to make those adjustments. So that's pretty cool. I am still waiting for Adobe to add the HSL to the masking. I'm hoping that that happens soon. They're adding everything else but the HSL tab. I need to be able to refine specific colors with masking. So Adobe, if this makes it across to you, please give us the HSL panel in masking. Please, please, please. I will forever be happy and grateful. So the next thing that they've added is this refined saturation slider in the point curve. Now this only works on the luminance. It doesn't work on the color ones. So if you understand the way that luminance works, when you bring down the luminance, um, then your saturation is gonna be more intense. It's gonna, the, the colors are gonna be more vibrant. Whereas when you raise the luminance, uh, the saturation goes away a little bit. So what this slider is intended to do is to help you shift the exposure or the, the color, the saturation back to where it was before you adjusted the luminance. Now, keep in mind that, you know, you can only adjust it so much because if the exposure, the luminance is darker, the saturation is more intense by the nature of how we perceive things. But it's kind of just meant to help you remove a little bit of that added intensity that often happens when you bring down the exposure or increase the exposure. So if we look here at the blue jeans, if I bring this tone curve down, you can notice that as I bring it down, those blues get more intense. Okay, so here's regular, and as I bring it down, those blues get more intense. So what this refined saturation slider allows is for you to have that blue not be that intense. So if I bring it to the left, you can see that the intensity of the blue color is not as much when it's all the way to zero versus all the way to 100. Now, it's, it's a, a subtle change, and I'm not even sure how much you'll be able to see it in the video, um, but it does reduce it a little bit. Now, like I mentioned, it's not going to work the same as, you know, you go into the HSL and removing the saturation. It's just meant to help you refine it to kind of get the hue of that color back to what looks a little bit more normal. Because again, when you bring down the luminance or you increase it, it does impact the saturation and sometimes it could look a little bit off. So the whole point of this is to really help you refine it just to get it to look natural based off of the luminance slash exposure that you have. So the next thing they've added is the ability to add or remove grain via a mask. And I have to be honest and say, I don't really know the practical use of this. Maybe there is, I don't use grain too much, so maybe I'm not readily understanding when you would really be able to use this. And there's something that they did that doesn't make any sense to me that I'm gonna to touch on in a minute. But basically what this allows you to do is to add grain into your mask. So this is, I have a mask of the background, and so I can come down here to the grain, and as you can see, I'm gonna increase the size and the roughness just so you can see. So now you can see I've added the grain to the background. There's no grain on the subject because that's outside of the mask. So, I, I, in theory, it's cool that you can add grain to the mask. I just don't really understand the practical use. Maybe you would want to maybe have more grain in the shadows. So this would allow you to mask using a luminance mask and you can add the grain into the shadows. I guess there is a use because it is nice to be able to control the grain. But here's what they did that doesn't 
make sense to me and I don't understand why they implement it this way. Now, if I go back into the mask and we go back down to the grain, as you saw, I increased the size and I increased the roughness so you could readily see it. The part that doesn't make sense is that the size and the roughness is within the mask. You've just updated it within the mask, but it is globally as well. So if I come out of the mask and I come down here to effects and here we have the global grain. Okay. So if I zoom in here, you'll notice, and it's, well, let me just add a little bit. So it opens up that these are both already set to hundred because that's what I set it to in the mask. Now notice if I bring the size down in the global grain size, it also reduces it in the mask. If I reduce the roughness in the global grain settings, it also reduces it in the mask. So it doesn't make sense that you're able to add grain via the mask, but you can't control the size and roughness, which is key elements of adding grain. You can't control those individually. Those are done globally. So it just doesn't make sense. And if you have multiple masks, and you add the grain to the multiple mask, you can't control the roughness and size of each mask. The roughness and size is global. So no matter how many masks you have, or if you do it globally, they're all impacted the same. That makes no sense to me whatsoever. What is the point of being able to add grain in the mask, but you can't control the properties of the grain within each individual mask or globally? Makes no sense makes zero sense whatsoever. So to me, it's almost not really usable because you can't control things individually. So you basically can put it in in a mask, but it's still somewhat global. It doesn't really make much sense to me at all, but it, that's a feature that they've added. So it is what it is, I guess. Now some other things that they've added into this as well. So now with the curve, when you are copying settings or syncing settings, you can pick between the parametric and the point curve where before, um, if you just select, you could just select curve. And so it would copy all of it. So just to show what that is, this one here is your parametric curve. So this is where you have your sliders, where you can make your adjustments via your sliders. And this, is your point curve where you can add your points and do whatever you want. So before this update, if you copied the settings for the curve, it would copy both of those. Now you have the option to just copy one or the other or both. They've also apparently made it, made some performance updates. So when you are going between images, it is faster. Personally, I haven't, I don't really see the difference. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't, I'm not sure. The catalog that I'm in right now, I already have one-to-one -one previews, so maybe I would need to redo this and not do the one-to-one -one previews to see if it's faster. I'm not seeing where it's any faster than what it really is. And to be honest, I feel like every update, they say they've made performance improvements, and I don't really see them. <laughs> I usually don't really see them. I mean, Lightroom isn't nearly as slow and sluggish as it used to be, but I still feel like it's not blazing fast. Like they always try to make it seem like it's going to be with the updates. They're forever making performance updates and it, it, it doesn't seem to be big enough to where I like really notice a ton, but it is what it is. And then lastly, in the calibration, they've added version six and apparently version six is supposed to help with banding. So I was trying to find an image to where I could see if it really made a difference. Um, and I didn't, I didn't have any where I had enough visible banding to really be able to see the difference, but that is supposedly the difference between version five and version six.